Hi, I'm Leslie Maddox, and today I'm sharing with you a review of Hooked on Phonics, along with my uh, recommendations and best tips for using it in your homeschool. While you can purchase individual grade levels separately, I ended up purchase, purchasing the box set. So the box set has a preschool level. I'm not covering that. I didn't feel the preschool level was helpful at all. It really just kind of goes over the alphabet, and we learned th those in different ways. We have used the first sec the kindergarten first and second grade level. I'm going to show you the second grade level. The kindergarten first and second grade levels are set up all very similarly, so seeing this should be enough. So when you look at each level, you get, a, or each um, grade level, you get two level workbooks. So here's a level one and level two. And this is not to be written, you don't write in these, they're not consumable. It's, um, it's just teaching the phonics rules and, and providing phonics practice. And we'll look at those more in a minute. You also get a couple of DVDs, one that to go with each, each uh, of these books. The content on here is, are little videos to introduce uh, new lessons, uh, each lesson in the books. And you also get some readers. I love the readers. I think the readers are the best part of Hooked on Phonics. They don't read these every week or every lesson. Throughout the books, as I'll show you in a minute, uh, they'll say, okay, now read this particular reader, and it covers the, the phonics rules that, it includes the phonics rules that they had covered the, in the previous lessons. And they're beautiful, beautiful covers. Um, really cute little stories. The illustrations are fantastic. This one was one of my favorites. This book is broken. I mean, it was just such a neat idea. It's a very unique book. Um, my second son didn't love it so much, but my oldest really loved it. And I think my youngest will like it too. It also comes with some sticker sheets. Uh, and you see here the, the little star stickers and there's a little place at the end of each lesson for them to put the little star sticker. Um, to show that they finished and to me that's not a big deal but all of my kids really love getting to put the star on and I thought that my younger kids would resent not getting to put their star in like the proper place because my oldest put his star in, in those spots but it turns out that my younger kids really love to see like my second son loved to see that you know that reminder that his brother read this like read this uh, this book, My Giant Bunny, and that he read it too, and he got to put his underneath. All right, so now let's look inside the book. So you'll see that it's broken up into units, and each lesson you're working on a particular sound or um, kind of a phonic rule, E double E here, the Y sounds. And then this book. Since it's the second grade book, you have a first grade review. You move on to your unit, and then each lesson is set up like this, where you have this learn page. You have the opportunity to practice these words that follow the phonic rule. In this example, the, in this lesson, the long A, and reading through these words. And then sometimes there's a tip at the bottom, not always, uh, but sometimes there's a, a little tip at, at the bottom uh, for the parent as, as you're teaching this to your student, uh, which I find helpful since I don't come from an education background, um, from teaching, um, I, I need all those little tips to help me to teach my kids. All right, so you have this learn page, then you have the practice page, and I like that there's numbered lines, there's three lines on each page, and that you read across just like you would if it were a sentence from left to right. And then you have a little story um, that uses, that is heavy, uses this font, uh, this uh, sound heavily. Every few lessons, so you have this lesson one, lesson two with a little story, lesson three with a little story, lesson four, I'll get to, I'll show you this in a minute. And then you have this practice page, so I, I guess every four or five lessons. Instead of reading a little story like you see here, kind of a comic book style, 
uh, your student gets to read one of the readers. And so they read this, and then there's some discussion questions you can ask um, and add their little star. An interesting thing to note about this curriculum is the way they do sight words. And they don't call them sight words, they don't call them high frequency words, they call them helper words. And helper words are basically high frequency words. Helper words are commonly used words that either can't be sounded out or have sounds your child is not yet ready to learn. There, sometimes there's just three words, sometimes there's six. Uh, they're always shown like this where they're in different colored boxes. When we get to this, what I usually do is we play a little game. Um, we'll practice the words uh, a few times and then I'll call out a color like red and see if they can remember it and kind of test their recall. If my student gets stressed out by this, I don't worry about it. Since they are commonly used words, this is just my thoughts about um, high frequency words. Since these are commonly used words, they are common. <laughs> you see them a lot. And I have found that as long as I read a lot of books with my kids, then you know have do shared reading or guided reading with them. If I just apply the word when we get to it, it's not long before they know the word. Uh, because even though there are a lot of readers to go along with Hooked on Phonics, I also always read something else with them. So for example, is kind of how I would how I do this with my kids. On day one of a lesson, we'd read through this maybe a couple of times, the learn page. And then after we're done with this, it might take, usually only takes about five minutes. Um, after we're done with that, then there's another book that we read, uh, a Bob book or a history reader or some, uh, some other real book that we, that we read. And then if I feel like they've, if they haven't mastered this the next day, we just read through them again. I try to keep it real low pressure. And then when we move, we move on from this when I feel like they're comfortable with it. So it might be one, two, three days. When they're done, when they've got this down pretty well, then we move on to the practice page. And we'll, I'll, we'll read line one. I'll just say read line one. And that might be all that we do that day, read line one. And then the next day we might read line one again if I feel like they're, if they were struggling with a couple of words. If once I feel like they have that one down, we'll read line two. Sometimes even if they struggle with one or two words, they want to keep reading. So I'll say, okay, go ahead and read line two. But if I feel like it's getting too frustrating for them, um, I'll, I'll put an end to it and we'll go on to whatever read, other reader we're reading, the Bob book or the history reader or science reader or whatever we're reading besides Hooked on Phonics. Um, so, and then the next day, if they struggle with these words, I might say, okay, okay, let's read lines one and two again, or today we'll read lines two and three. See, I just kind of gauge um, how my student is doing. And then when they've mastered those, we'll go on to the story. Usually we would read the story just once. Sometimes we'll go back over and read it again if they re really struggled with it. And uh, sometimes we even just read just a few boxes if, if they're struggling. If they're just getting too frustrated where I feel like I can almost see the steam coming off their brains because they're working so hard, then I end it. Uh, to me, the most important thing is consistency. Uh, that I have seen great results with my kids in learning to read and, and write and math, everything, just by being consistent. Even if you just, you just do what they can take each day, several days a week, so we do this four, four days a week. And then, um, if that's five minutes, great. If that's 15 minutes, great. You know, it just kind of depends. So your student might struggle with some um, of the more complicated little ones. Like at the end of this book, they work on two syllable words. So that's um, that's a little more challenging. And so this lesson might take a few days to get through. Um, and then when we do the reader, the reader we might not be able to do in one sitting. We might have to read a few pages and then put it down and the next day, pick up where we left off and keep reading, just like you and I read any book. You just you read a little bit at a time. Um, so, or, but other times, it's so simple. It's something that they need to learn, but it's simple enough that they got it. And it's not a struggle for them. They can kind of fly through a lesson. So it just depends. I would recommend Hooked on Phonics to students that do really well with the written word, and that may seem obvious because this is 
about reading, uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that there's really not anything else going on here. There aren't hands-on activities. Um, there's, I mean, you do have your DVD, so if you have a visual learner, uh, the, a visual learner might really enjoy this. But other than that, they, you know, it's, it's all about the books. Um, I would also recommend it for students that really enjoy one-on-one, -on -one, learning one-on-one, -on -one, because this is a, this is a sitting on the couch next to each other kind of curriculum. Um, and also students that just have a great delight in sharing a book with their parents. I would not recommend this for students that prefer physical learning because this is just a sitting on the couch type of curriculum. Uh, there are things that you could do to make it more physical. So you can maybe create a pointer, uh, maybe create a pointer out of craft supplies or buy one for them to point out the words. And um, you, so you can incorporate elements like that. You could also use letter tiles to build some of these words and, uh, you know, have more of a physical touching things, moving things around, hands-on experience. But if you're gonna be doing all that, then you might not even wanna use this unless you get it like for free or you have it already. In that case, you might wanna use a curriculum like All About Reading. I haven't used it, I've used All About Spelling, so I kinda of get the premise of it. That has more multi-sensory elements to it, so if you have a, a physical, interactive learner um, who doesn't really enjoy the written word and, and needs something extra to get them through this, to learn all these sounds, then um, you may wanna try a different curriculum. My best tip for using this is to set aside an amount of time, like five or 10 minutes, rather than what page you expect to be covering that day. I'll tell you one of the best tips I heard about how to correct your student when they're reading is, to just use the phrase, try again. So for example, if they're reading the word by and they say, you know, B, I might, I'll say, okay, try again. And if they don't get it the next time, I might just go ahead and supply the word. Or I might say, try again one more time and then supply the word the third time. If you're interested in more videos like this one where I share with you my best tips and uh, recommendations for how to incorporate different books and uh, curriculum to your homeschool, please tap on the playlist to the side. That's where I keep all of these types of videos. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.